I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. Donald Trump, America's foremost Richard Nixon impersonator. Just as Nixon could not stop bringing up Watergate to insist everybody should stop talking about Watergate, ensuring everybody kept talking about Watergate, Trump brought up Russia and the Russian Facebook ads and the Steele dossier six times last weekend to insist everything was discredited and a plot and everybody should stop talking about Russia, ensuring everybody will keep talking about Russia. And just as it never dawned on Nixon that if his administration paid the legal fees or paid anything else to men and women accused of or suspected of committing possible crimes on his behalf or just witnessing them, the payments could themselves become their own problem and help cost him his presidency. Trump has reportedly set out to do almost exactly the same thing. The payments first. The Republican National Committee confirms it has paid $430,000 worth of legal fees for Trump and his son Uday, I'm sorry, Don Jr. Axios.com quotes a White House source who says Trump won't repay the Republicans for that, but has instead pledged to pay the same amount, quoting Axios' source, to defray the costs of legal fees for his associates, including former and current White House aides. What's that called again? When there's a criminal investigation and one possible perpetrator gives money to other possible perpetrators or witnesses in the same case on whatever pretext, what does that sound like to you? When John Dean went into the Oval Office on March 21st, 1973 to try to scare Richard Nixon into calling off the Watergate cover-up, he explained that Watergate burglar Howard Hunt was blackmailing the White House for, among other things, legal fees. This was when Dean spoke his famous words, we have a cancer within, close to the presidency that's growing, and said these people are going to cost a million dollars over the next two years. Nixon, John Dean tells me now, had long before proposed to John Ehrlichman and Bob Haldeman that they should establish a legal defense fund for the Watergate burglars, publicly announcing that everybody deserved a lawyer. But instead of bringing that idea back, or instead of saying we have to stop this cover-up, instead of deflating the most memorable quote from the White House tapes, what Nixon actually told John was, quote, we could get that, you could get a million dollars, and you could get it in cash, I know where it could be gotten. In today's case of Trump and Russia, we know where it could be gotten, from Donald Trump's pocket. Holy crap, he may manage to clean up the legalities here, but this is still tantamount to hush money. And what's worse is it might work, except there's one guy who won't hush, who every time the Trump-Russia scandal fades into the background, keeps reminding us about Russia and the Steele dossier and the Facebook ads and all the rest, and that one guy is Donald Trump. In just over 34 hours, starting Friday morning, Trump tweeted six times in reference to Russia. In them, twice referring to the Steele dossier, twice to the Facebook ads, twice to Hillary Clinton, twice erroneously to people taking the Fifth Amendment, and once implying that the FBI and the Democrats and the Russians made the Steele dossier up. In other words, don't believe this nonsense that somebody in this country could have colluded with the Russians to sabotage our election. Instead, believe this other nonsense that somebody in this country could have colluded with the Russians to sabotage our election. The I'm rubber, your glue presidential defense. In a previous commentary, I suggested that Trump, like a desperate child, has to keep bringing the subject up, keep shouting those key words that he should never speak again, Russia, hacking, Assange, Putin, until he can presumably convince himself that he has convinced everyone everywhere that none of it is true. He could not make it look more like he is covering up something, something horrifying, if he hung a sign around his neck reading cover up it is madness and it will destroy him. That previous commentary was from the 10th of January. And every time since then, when the investigation or the story has seemed to droop, Trump has revivified it, firing Comey, meeting with Russians in the Oval Office and telling him he fired Comey, threatening Comey with apparently non-existent tapes, weighing in on or reportedly dictating his son's misleading denial about the Veselnitskaya meeting and now legal fees and or hush money for possible defendants or witnesses in the Russian scandal and six tweets alluding to Russia and two specifically about the Steele dossier. The Steele dossier, which has that part about the mm-hmm tape. The mm-hmm tape about which Trump kept telling Comey he needed to be cleared. 
You saw what John Schindler, the former NSA and Naval War College figure, wrote about the dossier and the mm -hmm tape, right? Though the specific, quote, PP tape claim is viewed with derision by most Western spies who know the Russians, it's very likely that the Kremlin possesses compromat on the president. Senior intelligence sources from several countries have confirmed to me that unpleasant videos of Trump exist. Unpleasant. So Trump keeps bringing up Russia. Why on earth? It is imperative to remember a little noted story from the New York Times that Trump's attorneys, particularly the guy with the mustache, Ty Cobb, the genius who held an extensive conversation with another Trump lawyer about the case over lunch at a popular Washington bistro without ever noticing that the guy at the next table from them was a reporter from the Times, this Ty Cobb guy has reportedly kept telling Trump that if he cooperates with Robert Mueller's investigation, Trump will get what he most desires, an official, public, permanent, everlasting statement that he's not being investigated about Russia, and by extension, that the Steele dossier and the thing in the Steele dossier, the mm-hmm tape, are not true. The topic Trump cannot leave alone cannot quit while he's merely behind and not yet, you know, impeached. $430,000 for other people's attorneys. And for their sake, let's hope they get better attorneys than Ty Cobb. Resist. Remove. Peace. This all might be explained by the title of my new book, Trump is Effing Crazy, is now available in stores and online and without a prescription.